uh, to remove the compound slide on its adjusting screws. Just to sort of split the difference. And then we'll set zero again. And that's within two or three tenths, which is near, but it's not near enough. It's got to be absolutely perfect. Right, once again, zero, wind it back on the compound slide, and that's basically about as good as I'm going to get it, within a tenth, so we'll nip up the adjuster nuts, So we'll have to do this again when we come to bore the, the most taper on the inside of the bush. Right, so basically, that compound side now is following exactly the same angle is that bush. Right, so we've got the angle set up using what using our clock gauge, the compound angles now set. You can see our port's still running nice and true. Good shot there, you know the chips are breaking. That's taking the three mil foot, one point five mil aside. I need to make sure I've got enough travel on the compound slide. So I want the compound slide fully that way, which is at its strongest point. I'll lock the main carriage up and then just use the travel on the compound slide to cut the taper. So I'll lock this up. Definitely got enough travel on here, I know I have. It's got quite a lot of travel on it. And I did nip the gibbs up on this slide very slightly. Just so it's got no chatter and no movement at all. That's plenty of travel on there. As you can see, when in the compound stage in, it's going to be a pain in the arse because they're very, very close to the tailstock. So what I've decided to do, this is not my idea, I've seen it done before. Take the handle off. I've already removed the pin. I've got a 15mm socket here on a piece of steel bar. I'm simply going to put my electric drill on the end of it and work it back and forward that way. So then with the drill in low gear, and using the trigger the variable speed, I can get a nice slow traverse on there. I can go fast, whatever I want, and that can obviously reverse it. So I've actually got a power feed on the compound slide. I think this is going to work rather splendidly. Right, please with that. So I have a fair bit to come off it. Please put 
when they finish on that, very pleased. The size I'm looking for is 1.515, measured with a, the make just touching the end, like that. And the size I've got is 1.521, so I want about 5 thou off here. I put the DRO on, and I'll turn in 2.5 thou. I put a different tool in with a nice rounded edge to take the final cut. I'm going to run the lathe at full speed, which is it's full 2000. That really is a nice finish. Quite happy with that. I'm just going to break this edge. 45 degree chamfer tool. A good chamfer on there. Just two things that makes it nice and smooth so you won't cut your hand and also if you drop it it's got less chance of ding in the edge. Before I take it out of the chuck, I'm going to take the chuck off and just try it in the taper. It's still warm so it should be tight. Certainly nothing the matter with that. I'll put a bit of marking below on there and we'll try it in again. Put a little bit of a chronometer below down there. A lot of people frown about polishing on the lathe. What you don't do is you don't do that. I use a big long piece and I just hold it lightly between one thing and one thumb and my hands are well away from the chuck. Okay, so my hands are out here and I've only got to hold it nice and lightly. You don't wrap it around your hand. And you've got to respect what you're doing and treat it with a lot of care and a lot of respect. But I can assure you every table is used on layers all the time. First, inch and a half, and it much. Add bit there, a little bit there. We'll try it again. This package turned up at work. This one's from Robert Fernstrom. Robert lives in Copenhagen. Have a look and see what's inside it. And it is it is quite heavy, certainly well well wrapped up. <clears throat> this looks interesting. It's a sort of the sort of bag I used to get a, a car jack in. Oh, selection of files. It's 
some really nice files here. This would be good because most of my files now are, are quite blunt. They've all done a lot of work. Nice fine file now, the a safe edge on each side. I suppose that's what we want to call a bastard file. I call most files bastard files, but that is it. Bastard is actually a, a cut of a file. Got right now, but I'll need my glasses to read it. Half round file, these are all brand new and they're all really sharp. I think that's what they call a middle cut file. When you store files, you must keep them apart. If they start rubbing together, that's what damages them. Nice coarse square file. Surprisingly, only people actually don't use files. You can spend the ages setting something up in a milling machine and do a simple job than a file would do in a few seconds. This one here is a real beaut. You do a bit of damage with that. One file handler. I've got a box of file handles I bought at a car boot sale. You don't use a file without a handle on, especially in a lathe because you can get the, the tang stuck up your hand. That's great, Robert. Thanks very much. Next time you see these, will be in my file rack with some nice new handles on.
once again it just remains to say thanks very much for watching thanks for subscribing thanks for clicking the like button and a special thanks to everybody who's still sending in well wishes towards Demi wife and me dad thanks very much